Okay, thank you for the introduction. So first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak at this Ace Pacific Dream. So my, I will talk about something uh, about positive scalar curvature and correlations. So to, for the self-containers, I just uh, started to with uh, the definition of the scalar curvature. So given a manifold M, and let GTM be a Riemannian ma metric, then take any point P, then we take a small ball of radius R around P and take the volume, and then divide it by the volume of the same radius in the Euclidean space. Then when R tends to zero, we have a asymptotic formula, formula just uh, like a, in the right-hand side, and on the P point, there is a, this function called Scale, uh, scalar curvature. This, this is the geometric uh, definition. So one of the basic questions in many geometry is that uh, given a manifold, whether there exists a metric with positive scalar curvature. So this is uh, why the, why we were interested in the positivity of the scalar curvature because on every manifold m of dimension larger than equal to three, there always exists a metric of negative scalar curvature. This is a classical result of custom Warner. And on the other hand, there are obstructions to the existence of metrics of positive scalar curvature. So the first one is general one is given by the Lichnow's formula dating back to 1960s. The Lichnow theorem says that if, we, if we, you have a manifold, you have a spin manifold, yeah, you have a metric of positive scalar curvature. Then the Hertzberg of the genus equal to zero. There's a vanishing. So if this one does not equal to zero, it genus does not equal to zero, then the on spin manifold there will be no metric of positive scalar curvature. Here the Hertzberg of the genus is defined. If you consider the curvature of some connection tangent bundles, then you can use the, use this term way theory to into to define it by using differential geometry method. And here, oh, sorry. Here the spin condition is essential. For example, on the two-dimensional complex projective space, uh, the eta genus is uh, non-zero, is, is one over eight minus. And uh, this is because CP2 is not a spin manifold. In general, a complex manifold, if you need spin condition, then the spin condition equivalent to that the first term class is even. So the proof of the the Lichnow theorem by non standard it is very simple, but it's very uh, meaningful. So the spin condition guarantees that there, there exists a Dirac operator on it. So if we assume manifold is even, even because an odd dimensional manifold, AH genus is always equal to zero, you assume the manifold even, then the spin bundle, the, then spin structure guarantees that there's a, with a metric, that guarantees that the spin bundle will be divided by plus and minus. And then the Dirac operator de decomposed to the D plus and plus D minus a decomposition and the self adjoint. The moreover, that D square would equal to e equal to this one. This is the Lichner's formula. And this Bogner Laplacian is a negative. So if we have positive scalar curvature, then D, then D is invertible. So the index would be equal to zero. Now, on the other hand, that a uh, single index term indicates that uh, the D plus, index of D plus, D plus comes from decomposition, equal to the A hat genus. So combined with this Lichner's formula and a uh, single index theorem, you, you just prove this uh, vanishing theorem. If we scale capture positive, then you get, in, get this A hat genus equal to zero. So this is the standard proof and uh, the, of this uh, famous Lichner's uh, vanishing theorem. So the aim of this talk is to try to present the broad generalizations of this theorem to a case of foliations. And the foliation has already appeared in the previous talk by Hagmati. So for completeness, I just recall the basic uh, definition. So by, by a foliation, we mean that a manifold and F an integrable subbundle of the tangent bundle and, and then for any two sections of this integral sub bundle, then the scalar curvature, oh, sorry, uh, the V bracket is still belong to, still a section of this in integrable bundle. And 
by this condition that we know that by the Faradini's integrability theorem, that for any point x in n, there's a leaf passing through this point denoted by this is a some manifold such that the integral boundary when restricted on the leaf uh, on the leaf is exactly exactly the tangent boundary of of this leaf so lo locally around any point of the manifold locally the formation looks like a fi vibration locally vibration case but globally it could be complicated for example the space of the leaves might be non hostile so in the vibration case that uh, the space of the leaves is just a, just a space of fibers is just a base space usually is a manifold but for, for if you only define the foliation structure abstractly the the leaf could be non hostile so that that that's indicates the complexity to study questions of uh, uh uh, but uh, still, we try to generalize as much as possible that uh, to study that uh, what kind of geometric structures can be generalized to the uh, case of foliations. For example, the, bay, the here we will talk about uh, how to generalize the scale curvature, the concept to the case of foliations. So we give we give Riemannian metric, uh, you you get the metric of this vector back, back bundle over M over M. Then through point any point X, this metric, since we have this TF identified with this ten this F one restriction on this one identifies tangent bundle. So then this determines uh, the menu metric on this sub on this sub manifold. Thus determines a uh, scalar curvature along this uh, sub manifolds along this leaf. So we define this function by this by this point at x is just the scalar curvature along the leaf for the take value at this point x. So this defines a function on the total manifold through that at the point, through the scalar curvature along the leaves. So we call this the leaf wise scalar curvature. Of course, if, if the manifold, if the integral boundary is just, just the total tangent boundary, then this is this is only one leaf, this is the manifold, and this is the usual scalar curvature. So in this sense, that the scalar curvature, leaf wise scalar curvature concept generalizes this uh, scalar curvature on the manifold to the case of uh, foliations. That is a natural question. Is a natural question which is still open is that if we want to study that uh, the structure between Relations between the structure, structure of the leaves and the, around uh, the total manifold. The natural question is that if we have a positive scalar leaf-wise scalar curvature on the manifold, uh, positive uh, yeah, yeah, positive leaf-wise scalar curvature is associated with um, me metric on uh, F. Then whether there would exist a metric, the many metric on total manifold with positive scalar curvature. Is positive scalar. It's a natural question in correlation theory. And in the easy case, in the simplest case, if we consider the vibration, the F is a vertical bundle of a, of a vibration. Then we take a splitting of total manifold with total tangent bundle, total manifold with splitting with the vertical bundle and a horizontal bundle. Horizontal bundle. Then we take a metric. We we'll take a, the orthogonal splitting of metric, but take a Rescaling by this uh, epsilon, then when epsilon tend to zero, we can see that the scalar curvature of the total manifold metric with respect to this epsilon, where epsilon tends to zero has this asymptotic formula. And then if this curvature is positive, Levi's scalar curvature, then when ten, if epsilon tends to very small, then this one will be positive. So in the foliation, in the vibration case, this question is, has an easy and a simple answer but in general it is uh, not it is not so to go back into this uh, to get more insight about this question we go we go to the uh, more geometric set, set setup of this uh, uh, policy so we'll talk about bot connection so let uh, ftn be a splitting this is integral with the bundle but we take a transverse bundle 
Then we take this metric given, we take any metric on the transverse bundle. Then we take an orthogonal direct sum of this metric. This gives a, a total metric n, and we take, take this projection, the p orthogonal is to the transverse bundle. Then on this transverse bundle, there's a well-known, with a famous bot connection. It's characterized by the following condition that if x is a Levi's, is a section of the of the sub bundle integral sub bundle and take any section of the transverse bundle then along this leaf the part connection is defined but you first take this bracket and then take it because this bracket can go out of this transverse section of the project back to this transverse so actually so this is a defined part connection it is leaf wise flat it's a characterized that's a leaf why is flat? But I'm not going to talk detail of this. But for us, that the important important thing is that the flatness is good. But the, the drawback is that that the, this connection along the level need not preserve the metric, the transverse metric of this metric. If it preserves this metric, then this omega would be equal to zero. But in general, it's omega x is not zero. Indeed, in the if this um, if this bot connection preserve the transversal metric, then this omega total zero. Then in the their standard name in the in the case in the serial in the serial of correlation is that is called the Riemannian correlation is omega is put equal to zero. So this is omega discrepancy to characterize how the bot connection does not preserve the metric on the transverse bundle. So then, just like in the in the foliation case, it is nature. It is it is nature to do to this uh, rescaling. So we take this epsilon epsilon one, and this this, this is uh, analog this, this 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 one in the vibration case. Take this is nature to take this epsilon and take the limit. We try to try to see what would happen in this case. To get a more precise formula, so we take uh, f1 to fq and local orthonormal basis of this integral bundle, and h1 to hq1 is the local normal basis of the transverse bundle. Then for take for any fi, we take the, this number because this is in transverse bundle, so the norm, norm square is still well defined. So with this, with this. Then we have a complete formula based on earlier computations with Kerpen Liu and Yong Wang. We, we, we have this big uh, formula. Is that when epsilon, when epsilon is small, this scalar curvature of the rescale of the metric on total manifold equal to the Levi scalar curvature plus this O epsilon term. But there's a lot of this middle term here. This uh, uh, middle term here, it involves omega and also involves the derivative of the omega. So it is very complicated. It looks very complicated. Of course, when omega equal to zero, that's in the case of Riemannian polarizations, then all this omega disappears. What you get back? What you get back is the formula similar to the case of a vibration case, or Riemannian polarization case. So this is easy. But the general case is, is much more complicated, uh, just like this. You even take a look at the co-dimension cool one case. That means the transverse bundle is of rank one. You still get that the H only has one term, but you still get this uh, middle term, which is non-zero. It involves not only omega, but also derivatives is uh, omega. So it is complicated. So generally, tautologically, you do not have a naive way that from the positivity of the Levi scale curvature, you get the positivity of the of the metric of a, a positive scale curvature on the total manifold. But still, that recalls that uh, the Lichtenstein theorem gives some objections on the existence of this uh, of this uh, metric on, on the total manifold of positive scale curvature. So, so in spite of this case, to at, at at least for what we see now that they try to understand this question, you try to generalize the Lich-Noise theorem to the case of 
foliations to try to see what would happen. Indeed, in this case, there is a famous vanishing theorem of Alan Poe, which generalizes the digital theorem to the case of foliations. The theorem of Kuhn is dating back to 19, 1980s. So the theorem states that if you have a foliation at the integral bundle, we assume M is closed and oriented, but we assume that F the integral subbundle is spin. Then if there is a met metric of Levi's positive scalar curvature, then you get that H genus equal to zero. So where F equal to Tm, then Tm is spin manifold, M is spin manifold, then the, so we, we have positive scalar curvature, then you get this is the literal theorem. So in this case, that uh, that uh, Alan Kuhn generalized this uh, literal theorem to the case of Levi's uh, scalar curvature positive, uh, but the integral bundle is speed. That means every leaf is a, a speed. So in general, here the question, the interesting point is that here if this spin, the total manifold need, need not spin. So it had m is not a priori an integer. Of course, you, under this condition, you get a zero. It's an integer, but not it's a priori. It's a non-spin manifold. So you you you, you recall that this CP two equal to equal to one minus one over eight, so it is not an integer. So this this make this this, this may makes Kuhn theorem more interesting, and this is theorem is highly non-trivial even in the case of, of Q equal to one. In the although in in this case of in, in Q dimension one, the one dimensional manifold oriental ma line bound is always spin. So this spin, the T and total spin is uh, equivalent. We, we, we do not have problem with this, but uh, still, in, even in this case, it is much more complicated as we see that, that just, we see that there is no naive way to get positive scalar curvature on it to apply Lichtenau's formula. And so for Kohn's proof, so we first look at a very simple case. Since simple case that the simplest case is the vibration, even if F is a, a F equal to is a vertical bundle of a fi vibration M over some B. Then the A hat M is an integration, it can be integration of this or the fiber wise integration of this one. But this one, since the fiber is spin, spin, every fiber is spin, you have a Dirac operator. So you have this index bundle, index bundle of a tier single family index. And then I tell single family index theorem see that the sum product of the index bundle is indeed given by the integration of, of this A hat class, the vertical A hat class. So in this way, so if each fiber you realize has positive scalar curvature, then this one will equal to zero by the literal formula, then you get zero, then you get zero. So in the simplest case, the vibration case, this cone theorem is a is the application of a single family's index plus the additional vanishing theorem. theorem. So this is nature for Alan Kuhn that to, to prove theorem by generalizing this strategy to the case of all issues. So he developed, uh, he, he developed a non commutative index theorem on all issues, especially the Kuhn's uh, longitudinal index theorem. And also, he used this cyclical cohomology to develop a number of geometry. Indeed, in this, this theorem, it can be it is viewed as the early achievement of this non-commutative geometry. So, as one sees that even in the vibration case, it relies essentially on the fiberwise Dirac operator. So, for for them, I think for Kuhn, that the spin stretch on a Levi's case is essential. Even for the Riemannian foliation, so I, I want, just want to remark that even for the Riemannian foliation, since Tm may not spin, only F, only F is spin. So you do not get a, a easy, since even easy in this case, you can get this uh, with this scalar curvature positive, but it is not spin. You do not get a direct the vanishing of A genus. You cannot apply direct to the literal theory. There's one difficulty. The other difficulty is that is that for many manual foliations, you even do not have this uh, rescaled positivity of scalar curvature. 
and so it's more, more difficult for Alan Kung. And Alan Kung, in this one, for this case, he, gave, he introduced a very, very clever, ingenious geometric construction called Kung vibration. We, we will call Kung vibration to overcome, to overcome this difficulty. We'll come back to this. So, for geometry, so we have mentioned that Alan Kung proved his theorem by using differential non committed geometry. For geometers, it is natural question is that uh, to ask whether there is a differential geometric proof of Kung theorem. So, where well, Kevin Liu was a student around 19, at the beginning of the 1990, was a student of Yao at Harvard. Yao suggested him to use the adiabatic limit. That, that is the process of taking epsilon 10 to 0 in the uh, above pages to study this Kung theorem. So the simple case, as I mentioned, the simplest known trivial case is the Riemannian correlation because two to the manifold is not spin. In this case, you get you have positive scalar capacity because if, if this one, then when it from 10 to 0, you get uh, this uh, positivity. But you do not have spin structures. So the, our first uh, attempt when Kirk Liu visited me in the beginning of uh, 1990. We try to overcome this this difficulty, and this difficulty turns out to be you can overcome it easily. What what we call it, what we construct is to to construct what is so we call sub deluxe operate to overcome this difficulty, and to prove the to prove uh, the case of Riemannian correlation in an easy way without using this uh, generalizations of the families index theorem. So we recall that we just could recall that we assume now M is a Riemannian correlation. And we also assume for, you know, without a loss of generality, that we, the rankers of the bundles are of even dimension, the consider, in consideration are even, of even dimension. And also we take a twisted bundle of this transverse bundle, which can be obtained from the direct sum and the tensor product and so on around this, uh, around this, Oh, this uh, transverse bundle. So we then we call take a twisted bundle, twisted by this transverse bundle, and sub deluxe operator. The sub, which means that the spinner bundle is just associated with sub bundle. This sub integrable bundle associated with the sub bundle. This is the sub we here. Then this is a twisted bundle on the transverse bundle because you you need to operate on total manifold. You need a total. But because this is not spin bundle, so you cannot take a spin bundle, but instead we take an exterior algebra bundle of the transverse bundle. And given it a signature splitting in, in the definition of the signature operator on the manifold, I'm not going into detail. Anyway, the sub direct operator, operator the sub it means that for this sub bundle, we can construct a spinner bundle and direct operator. And this index, the, of course, it is D plus or minus and, and the other split here. So the index plus, of this one would equal to give it was equal to this one, and this is L hat class, is a Hertzbruch L hat class. The point here is that we can choose give a series of uh, this twisted bundle such that the sum of this uh, they take a regional coefficient, a linear combination of this index would take a different sub bundle would equal to a hat genus. So in, in order to prove this one equal to zero, you need only to prove that each index of this one equal to zero. So you reduce the question from the Dirac operand to the manifold to the, to the case of this sub Dirac operate, to the case of sub Dirac operate. And indeed, for this sub Dirac operate, we have a Lichnow theorem. They generalize the Lichnow theorem. Simply that when epsilon tend to zero, this is still Buchan and Laplace positive, the scalar curvature. And all the construction, all the, all the contribution of the transverse bundle are going to this O epsilon square. This comes from the fact that that is the, the, the Leibniz, sorry, Leibniz flat, flatness, flatness of the bot connection. Uh, of the bot, bot connection. So this is the correlation structure comes from here. So then when epsilon tend to zero, this positivity will guarantee that this is positive. Then you get a zero of index, zero of index, and you get the air genus equal to zero. So this gives the proof 
of the cone theorem in the simplest non-trivial case, in the Foliation case without using Foliation index theorem. But the more, the, the more general difficult case is that the, it's a non many case. That means we do not no longer have this, no longer have this O epsilon square. And uh, then in this case, because cone introduce what we call cone vibration over cone, this difficulty. So then we need a better understanding of this cone vibration. So before going on, um, I would like to mention that the idea of using adiabatic limit to study the cone vanishing is also employed by Gromov independently in his long paper on positive curvature dedicated to graphon. So it is busted. So now in searching, we are, we are original motivation is searching a more geometric proof of cone theorem. It turns out uh, that we come up with, with an alternative generalization to the, to the foliation case of this additional theorem, which is trivial for, for Riemannian for foliation. So I will state this theorem in, in, in the following. Is that if you have M of steel foliation, M compact, then we assume this M is spin. So TM is spin instead of for cone is F spin for cone. For cone, but here we instead assume total manifold is spin. Then it, under the same conditions that is the Levi's positive scalar curvature, then the A has genus equal to zero. So in this case, since it, for this result, since the TM is spin, so in the Riemannian Foliation case, you have positive scalar curvature, you can apply Lichtenau theorem directly to get it. So for the Riemannian Foliation, it is true. But uh, for the, so the only difficulty, the main difficulty, just uh, like in cone theorem, is that this omega is non-zero. So in this case, this is the same difficulty Alan Kohn meets in his proof of his vanishing theorem. So the resolution is that we need the vibration introduced by Kohn. So for this, I just recall the definition of the Kohn vibration. So recall that we have, we have integral the bundle of the tangent bundle over the manifold. So then this Kohn vibration, this Kohn vibration is a, is a, the fiber is that. So we have seen that this omega is non-zero for any, any metric, for any metric on the transverse bundle. So if this causes the difficulty. But the cone, the courage of cone comes from that he, instead of consider single metric, he consider all the metrics on the transverse bundle. So each fiber is all the Euclidean metrics on this transverse space, space at uh, X or this one equal to F or so called at the X. You consider this all this metric. This is a homogeneous space of non-positive cur curvature. It's a non-compact, non-compact. Non and this non-positive curvature also plays, this non-positive curvature property plays an essential role in Kohn's proof in his vanishing theorem. So instead of considering one metric, he considered a vibration, so consider all these metrics on the fibers. So the good the advantage of this one is that the ad advantage of this one is that that the metric that the in integral subbundle lifts to an integral subbundle canonically of this of the tangent bundle of this total vibration. This can be lifted by using the bot connection, and the metric also also lifts, and also the vertical tangent bundle carries a metric of uh, Intrinsic metric of fiberwise, intrinsic metric of this positive non-positive curvature. So then you get a natural splitting of total tangent bundle with this, uh, with this lifted of integral subbundle with vertical bundle and some transverse bundle. They take any transverse verse bundle. Then this is T H M hat or equal to F also going to plus this F also called the horizontal center bundle. Then with this one, this one would be equivalent to the, to the lift of the transverse bundle of the foliation case. And the Alan Kuhn says that this one, transverse bundle carries a canonically induced metric. It's important because why this metric? Because for any P point, by definition, 
it's a metric on this transversal space. So that it determines the metric on this transverse space on the, on the projector point on the original space. Then this one is exactly equal to the push down of this, uh, of this uh, transverse bundle at the fiber P. And then, then this one is equivalent to, to this one as a space. So then this one determines the metric on uh, this one. So by definition, it takes a canonical metric on, on this transverse bundle. So now you have three metrics, lifted metric, canonical vertical metric, and the canonical metric on the transverse bundle. Then we get an orthogonal splitting. On the total cone vibration is that uh, orthogonal splitting of the metric of this one. And for Alan Cohn, the basic observation is that, so this one considered as an integral sub-bundle of the tangent bundle of the total vibration is integrable. Then this one, the port connection or the holonomic groupoid act almost isometrically on almost also magically on the, on the transverse bundle, which is a split. Now you split two back bundles, two back bundles. Then take a leaf-wise section. Then this one, omega x, omega x restricted on f hat would equal to zero. This is given by this condition. And omega x restricted on the vertical bundle is also, also e equal to zero. This is a cons observation. And then this one comes from the vibration structure. This one comes from vibration structure. So in this case, that the omega x vertical bundle when acting on the total transverse bundle will take a form of zero, zero, zero. But here we have some time. If this one also equal to zero, then we have remaining for AC. But if this one is not zero, then, but anyway, we have three zeros here. So this is very close to the manipulation. So you can see that it is almost the manipulation. So tautologically, you can expect that many properties of the manipulation can be lifted to this case. Indeed, indeed, uh, we will see that what we try to do is to try to this make it equal to zero. Then you get back to the manipulation case. You can try to finish. So that means on the base manifold, on the original foliation, you, you do not have very even a close look, couple close connection with Riemannian foliation, but on the cone vibration, you have a close relation with Riemannian foliation. But the difficulty is that the total cone vibration is non-compact. So all this one is uniformly holds only on a small, uh, any compact part of the then also following Kuhn, then we take an embedded section. We recall that this M cat, this M. We take an embedded section S. This can be done by take uh, by definitely take a metric on the transverse bundle on the on, on the base. Then by definition, on every point on the base, this define a point on the fiber. In this way, define canonical section here. And we also rescale the metric. Since the transverse bundle has two, two direct sum, or direct sum of two back bundles, so we introduce two para para parameters, it's beta and epsilon. So this is all the structure we need. We need. So we recall that, that the cones proof, it, we recall that, that uh, our alternative generalization of original formula that we assume original manifold is compact and spin, and you have a Levi's positive scalar curvature. Then we, we have an embedding of cone that the embedded section as usual. Then you take a five, 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 then take a manifold, sub manifold, embedded sub manifold SM. Then all the fibers, then all the fibers will, will be, uh, will be a composite vibration over fibers, fibers this over this SM. So then this M hat over this SM. This looks like a vector bundle. This looks like a back bundle. So we want to apply some kind of anatomic Riemann Rocher from the big manifold to the case of this embedded sum manifold to try to get the result. And the difficulty is still, as I mentioned, the end head total vibration non-compact. Each fiber is a homogeneous space. So to do so, to do so, we have a 
vibration of SM. To do so, we take, uh, take I, every device, so since we have non-positive curvature, we have distance. So every point, we take a distance loop from, the, from this point on this SM, we call this blue P. Then we define a disk, when we define a distance and define a disk bundle of radius R for any positive R, we define a disk bundle over this SM. This will be a disk bundle. Each fiber is a, di a disk of radius R. This you get, this one, a smooth manifold with boundary. You get a smooth manifold boundary on which we will work on index N. We try to generalize the uh, Lich noises argument to this manifold, big man ma manifold with boundary. But since M is non compact, we will do something like in the uh, localization of index N. Still, on this one, since the bud F plus F orthogonal equal to the pi star Tn, so this one is a spin. So we can construct subdelar op operator with this, this spin structure. Beta epsilon means that this ma metric depends on beta epsilon spin. And on the vertical boundary, we take exterior boundary. This is a subdelar operator. Moreover, for this R, we have introduced this R, we define a deformation of this sub Dirac operator by this extra term, R. Here, R here is that, uh, is that if you fix, this, fix a, some many, a neighborhood of the boundary, then you take R to zero, then this one will, will tend to zero, R, uh, R to infinite, this will tend to, tend to zero and fix the neighborhood. But here, this is why we here consider this neighborhood where R is large, this would large disk bundle, so enlarge the fixed neighborhood. So enlarge this bundle. This is inspired by Kohn's original proof, but it's not, not appear in the usual Riemann rock. So this, we divide it by this R. Then we can get to estimate. First, in the interior, interior, just like a literal formula, just like the Riemannian foliation case, when beta epsilon is very small, you get this positivity and you can control this one. This uses almost isometric property. And the, the second estimate is that see, with this R, the bracket is equal to there is R here. So then this scalar curvature could construct, could, could, could dominate this one over R, one over R, this positivity. So when R is large, so this property comes from the non-positivity curvature around the fiber. So you combining this, combining this, you see that at least on the interior, in the interior, on the interior of this uh, uh, manifold with boundary, on the cone vibration, you take the square, you take the square, as this one equal to this by definition, you take the square, combine, combine the two estimates, you get the Buchner Laplace plus the scalar curvature, one over beta and and, the, and this one comes from, from this one. Then you take a rest estimate term. This positive scalar curvature, curvature will dominate this one over R and dominate small O. So you get the invertible, invertibility. At least you get the invert, invertibility, top, naive invertibility on the interior of this disk bundle. Then our proposition is that, is that when R is large and beta epsilon small, just as I indicated, you get an invertible operator in the interior. On the other hand, when restricted boundary induce the induced operator on the boundary is also invertible when I is sufficiently large. So this can be seen that if we enlarge, you have rho here, rho equal to R here. So you take a look, simply take a look at around the boundary. So on the boundary, we no longer have this positive scalar curvature. But the dominate this one, rho equal to R, rho equal to R here, this will equal to one, but there is one over R. When R is large, this one can dominate this one. So naively, you still get invertible operate. So th with these two invertibility, invertibility, both that the operate is invertible on the interior and invertible on the boundary, you get, you, you either apply human rough or apply a particle sink, you get a vanishing of index. And then you use analytical localization formula uh, strategy due to, due to bismuth bull or some standard index theorem. You can, you might roughly, you can get this one equal to 
equal to this a genus, and this is exactly equal to this. So this complete proof, this is a, the main idea of the proof that you apply the sub operator, operate, deform the sub operator operate on the cone vibration, but on enlarge it some manifold to get it. And I would want to say that a similar construction also applies to the to give a purely geometric proof which of the cone vanishing theory, which is our original purpose. So then the last slide, I would give a brief summary. So what we prove is that a manifold spin with totally Levi's positive scalar curvature would give the vanishing of the a genus. So combined with this Stoltz theorem, the famous Stoltz theorem, we see that if this M4K, because the a genus is M4K manifold, is simply also simply connect the spin and leave a scale curvature. That would imply there exists a positive scale curvature on the total manifold, positive scale curvature metric on the total scale curvature. So this answers the open question for simply connecting manifold of, of, the, of the dimension larger than or equal to five, because our result also applies to other dimensions that I did not go into detail. For non spin, for spin case, for the non spin case is a famous result of Gromov and Lawson. So for the this for simply kinetic case, this question has a natural has a natural answer. For non simply kinetic case, the simple case is torus. So we, in the same paper, we prove that there's no metric of positive scalar curvature on any integral subbound on any of the torus. So when FATM, this is the already the famous theorem of Shun Yao and Gromov and Lawson saying that there's no metric of positive scale curvature on any torus. So we generalize this to the no metric of positive scale curvature, Levi's positive scale curvature on any integrable subbound. This is the simple case for non simply connected manifold. But the general case is still, oh, still open. Also for simple connect case, it is a question of this. Maybe we'll be using this to study the C star algebra. And, uh, and so on. So I'm not going to detail. My time is up. So finally, I will thank thank you for your attention. And also, it turns out that I'm the last speaker. So on behalf of the, all the speakers, I would like to thank the organizer, organizers for the wonderful organization. Thank you.